Understanding Options on Stocks, Part 5, Bull Spread. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, email, phone number, and the source for this information was the optionsimple.com website. We went over some option terms that I used at Options 4. I'm going to put them up on the screen, but not necessarily go over them in detail. You can check the other video. We talked about at the money, in the money, and out of the money calls, which determines whether or not the strike price where you're buying the option makes the position profitable right now or not. We also talked about the definition of a spread, which is two option positions, and what it means to be bullish and bearish. And I'm going to jump over to my bull call spread option here in Excel. Remember that bullish means optimistic. And our strategy here is we expect the underlying stock price to rise, which is why it's bullish. But we want to manage risk. We want to manage risk in the transaction. So how do we do that? We're going to buy an at-the-money or out-of-the-money call. So in other words, we want to buy a call at a strike price that's either equal to the market value or below. So it's not profitable yet. It's either break even or not profitable. We want to sell the out of the money call at a strike or exercise price that's farther out of the money. In other words, we're selling the option that is even less attractive. Here's the trade off we're going to get income from the short or sold call. So we're going to get those premium dollars in the door. That's income to us. That's the good news. The bad news is our profit is limited. Once the price, the market price gets above the strike price of the call that we sold. And this will become more apparent when you see, see it graphically. Again, I'm not going to belabor it, but I've put some of the basic option detail over here to the right. And you'll note that the strike price, exercise price is either $30 or $40. Now we have different strike prices, and the premium that we pay is different. It's either 10, which we multiply by 100 shares to get 1,000, or it's 5, which we multiply by 100 shares to get 500. So here's the position. We're going to buy an IBM 30 put, put option. I'm going to change that to call. I've got a typo. We're going to buy the 30 call option at 10. The right to buy the stock at 30 is worth 10 or $1,000. We're going to sell the 40 call option. The right to buy the stock at 40 is less attractive than the right to buy it at 30. Therefore, it has a lower premium. So where's our break even on this transaction? Well, let's assume the stock price is at 35, which is in between the two strike prices. We're going to exercise our option, our call option, and buy the stock at 30. We pay out $3,000. We're going to sell the stock at a price of 35. That's the market. We're going to get in $3,500. And the net that we paid for the options was the $1,000 outflow and the $500 inflow, so on a net basis we paid $500 for the option. We add all that up, our profit and loss is a break even. What's the most we can lose? Well, the most we can lose is the net premiums that we pay. And that will happen if neither option gets exercised, because if the strike price doesn't, if the market price doesn't drop below 30, neither option is attractive, which means neither call owner would exercise. So that's the most we can lose. Well, what's the most we can gain? Let's assume the, start, the market price, stock price goes above 40. Well, that 40 call that we sold to the other person right here, is going to get exercised, which means they're going to buy at 40, which means we must sell shares at 40, so that's $4,000. But the problem is we don't own those shares. So we're going to exercise the option we bought, 
which is up here, we bought an option to buy shares at 30. We're going to exercise our option, buy shares at 30, spend $3,000, and deliver those shares to the other call owner who bought them at 40. The net premiums that we paid, we already went over, is $500, so we have a $500 profit. We have to we sell them at 40, we buy those shares at 30, and we pay the premium. So the way this looks graphically is, here's our strike prices, 30 and 40. We learned that $35 is our break even, which we went through right here. And we found out that at any price above 40, the most we can gain is $500 and we illustrated that here. Any price below $30, our max loss is $500, and we illustrated that here. Let's finish up by talking about a bull put spread. In this case, we're using two put options of 30 and 40. And again, same strategy, we're going to buy an option that's further out of the money, that's less attractive. So we're buying the option that has the right to sell it at 30, which is less attractive than selling it at 40. So it should make sense to you that the selling at 30 has a lower premium than selling at 40. What's our break even? Well, the strike price was in the middle between the two strike prices at 35. We own the 40 put option we would, excuse me, the other person owns the 40 put option. They're going to sell at 40, we must buy at 40, which means we pay out $40,000. Well, we take those shares that we bought up here, and we're going to sell them at the market price of 35, and get in $3,500. The net premiums that we paid is an inflow of $500, so there's our break even, stock price of 35. What's the most we can lose? Well, what if the stock price is at 30? Same as before, that other person is going to sell at 40, which means we must buy at 40. $4,000 goes out the door to buy the shares. We exercise our right to sell the shares at 30 because those shares are, quote, put to you. That's where that term comes from. They have the right to sell. You are obligated to buy, which means the shares are put to you. So we're going to take those shares that we had to buy, they were put to us, and we're going to exercise our put option to sell them at 30, $3,000 in the door. The net of the premiums that we paid was an inflow of 500, so there's our maximum loss. The most we can gain, the net premium paid of 500, and that happens when neither side exercises the option, and the reason that neither side exercises is, if the stock price is above 40, why would you sell at 40 or 30 if the stock price is higher than that, 41, 50, 90? You, neither put would get exercise, and we would keep the net difference in the premium to 500. So again, graphically, any price above 40, our maximum gain is 500. Any price below 30, our maximum loss is 500. That's the end of part five of our course. We have essential courses available, which are our one to three hour videos. If you go to our video listings on the website that's listed below, you can find those. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is our website. Here's our email address and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.